Hitler's war machine continues to devastate Europe. The Allies have to contend with super weapons concocted by the minds of Nazi scientists and engineers. But one threat looms greater than all the rest, a nuclear bomb. The Allies have been working toward creating an atomic bomb for several years now, hoping to beat the Nazis to the punch. But as World War II rages on, no one is quite sure how close Hitler and the Nazi regime are to weaponizing nuclear energy. One thing is for sure. If Hitler has access to the power of the atom, he will use it to bring the world to its knees. This cannot be allowed. To stop the Nazi bomb, the Allies send soldiers on secret missions to find out how close the Nazis are to an atomic bomb. Their mission is to gather and analyze intel on the Nazi nuclear program. If the Nazis are close to creating an atomic bomb, they must find ways to slow them down. If they've succeeded, then they must be stopped before the bomb can be used. Reconnaissance gathered at the beginning of the war shows that the Germans started researching nuclear power under the name Uranium Project. It began shortly after the German invasion of Poland in September of 1939. This is unwelcome news because it means the Nazis have been working with nuclear energy for several years. The German Army Ordnance started the program by putting physicist Kurt Diebner in charge to investigate the military applications of fission, who was aware that when an atom is split apart, huge amounts of energy are released. Who knew something so small could be so powerful? What will scientists think of next? Diebner is working with another physicist whose name is Werner Heisenberg. Communications between the two Nazi scientists had been intercepted, revealing that Heisenberg has calculated that using nuclear fission to create a chain reaction may be the Nazis' path to producing a nuclear explosion. It would seem that the Nazis understand the basic principles of an atomic bomb, and Hitler might be closer to completing an atomic bomb than anyone originally thought. It is clear that Nazi scientists have figured out the basic principles of fission but have not yet been able to weaponize atomic energy. However, information from a Norwegian scientist who escapes Nazi-occupied Norway provides vital information on the path the Nazis are planning to take to create their nuclear bomb. The scientist had worked at a facility that specializes in creating heavy water. Heavy water is a water molecule that has hydrogen atoms with a neutron in their nucleus. This is very rare but gives the hydrogen atoms more mass, making the water molecule itself heavier. This special form of hydrogen is vital to the Nazi nuclear program because it can be used to create the chain reaction needed for a nuclear explosion. If the Nazis are allowed to continue using the heavy water facility, they'll eventually be able to create an atomic bomb. A mission must be organized to shut down the facility. Allied command is informed of the role the heavy water facility plays in Hitler's nuclear program, and a secret mission called Operation Gunnerside is organized. The chemists who worked at the heavy water facility in Vemork, 100 miles outside of Oslo, volunteered to spearhead the mission. They already have a working knowledge of the facility and will be able to infiltrate and disrupt the Nazi operations. They're trained in Scotland and put through rigorous physical and mental tests. By the end of their short training regimen, they have the basic skills of a special forces unit. The leader of the squad is Leif Tronstadt. He's nicknamed the Mailman by his comrades. Tronstadt was a professor of chemistry before the war started. When the Germans invaded Norway, he enlisted and fought to protect his country. Norway lost and became one of the many European countries occupied by the Nazis. Tronstadt joined the underground and provided the Allies with intelligence on what the Nazis were using the heavy water for at the Venmark facility. He escaped Norway and went to England to relay all the information he had gathered. Once in England, he only wanted one thing to be sent back to Norway with a squad of soldiers to disrupt the Nazis' plans. The intelligence that Tronstadt provides informs the Allies that they cannot just bomb the facility. All of the vital equipment is deep underground, and even if the plant is bombed, operations most likely can resume with minor adjustments. Also, innocent Norwegian civilians are working at the heavy water facility and will be killed in a bombing raid. The Allies know they need boots on the ground. The Norwegian scientists under the command of Tronstadt are assigned the job of killing Nazis and disrupting their plans for the heavy water facility. After receiving their training on sabotage and stealth warfare from a top-secret British unit called the Special Operations Executive, the Norwegian unit is ready for their mission. They are flown to Norway and airdropped outside of Vemork. The Norwegian squad knows that the facility is already a natural fortress. It can only be accessed by a single-lane suspension bridge and is surrounded by mountains. Legend has it that the air grows cold so fast 
that it can freeze the flames of a fire, the Norwegian squad buckles in for the coldest few weeks of their lives. The scientists turned soldiers spend days skiing through the snow to collect more intel on the operations at the facility. They were all born and raised in Norway, so they grew up in similar harsh environments. They used their new training and long-time knowledge to carefully make their way through forests and across mountains. However, the natural topography is not the only thing the Norwegian squad has to worry about. The Nazis have surrounded the facility with minefields, searchlights, barbed wire, and patrols. It seems that the heavy water factory is now a Nazi fortress, but the mission has to succeed. The Nazis might be close to creating a nuclear weapon, and the disruption of their heavy water facility could slow them down. After days in the harsh environment, the squad decides there's only one way into the Nazi fortress. They must climb down the steep rock cliff that the heavy water facility sits against. They slowly rappel down the icy rock wall, supporting one another in case someone slips. It's treacherous, but the squad makes it down without any mishaps. They infiltrate the facility through one of the rarely used back doors, being sure not to trip any alarms. The Norwegian squad sets explosives at key points around the facility. They sneak through winding concrete hallways, always making sure they're one step ahead of the Nazis. The squad escapes out of the facility and moves to a safe distance. Then they wait and watch. The explosives go off, causing fires to erupt all over the facility. The machinery is damaged and it'll take months to repair. They successfully disrupted Hitler's ability to make heavy water, and the Allies can breathe a sigh of relief that the Nazis will not be able to create any more heavy water for nuclear weapons in the near future. But what if they already have stored up enough heavy water to make an atomic bomb? Is it possible the Nazis already have everything they need for nuclear warfare? The Allies need to make sure that Hitler does not already have a stockpile of atomic bombs hidden somewhere. It's time to move on to the next mission. Further intel from Allied soldiers suggests there might be an operational nuclear reactor somewhere in Germany. This cannot be confirmed, but nothing can be left to chance. The Allies are making great progress across the world. The United States has even completed the testing of their nuclear bombs, and the devastation it causes is immense. If Hitler has his own atomic bomb, he might turn Europe into a radioactive wasteland. Allied forces are advancing on Berlin. It seems that Hitler is backed into a corner, but that's when a wild animal is the most dangerous. Intel comes in that scientists working under Diebner have built and tested a nuclear device. The Germans are doing everything in their power to try and turn the war around. Allied Command puts together a secret mission to kidnap Hitler's main scientists. If successful, the mission will end the possibility of a Nazi nuclear bomb once and for all. A covert special ops unit is formed, codenamed the Alsos Mission and nicknamed Lightning A. The team is led by Colonel Boris Pash. Pash was the counterintelligence officer in charge of security for America's nuclear weapons program. Pash and Lightning A follow the Allied troops to the front lines. They interrogate any scientists that are captured along the way for more information about the Nazi nuclear program. It seems that scientists do not have a nuclear bomb yet, but the Allies need to be sure so Pash's team presses forward with the rest of the advancing Allied troops. Lightning A is about to embark on their most dangerous mission. Pash and Lightning A push past the advancing Allied forces. They are now operating on their own behind enemy lines. The advance forward was not moving fast enough for Lightning A's mission. Unfortunately, the special force has to deal with some of the toughest Nazi soldiers still left in the war, the Werwolf. This is the name given to the bands of die-hard Nazi youth. They will not give up, and they're waiting to kill any allies that cross their paths. Pash and Lightning A reach Heidelberg, where they come across a large Nazi force. Things can go really bad, really fast, if they're not careful. But the Nazi soldiers believe the war is almost over and surrender to Lightning A. The Nazis are interrogated for information on the whereabouts of the remaining nuclear scientists. The information that is uncovered leads Lightning A to a secret Nazi nuclear lab hidden in a cave. The lab contains a test nuclear reactor. It is disassembled immediately. The problem now is that the Nazi scientists have been tipped off about the Allies' special mission, and they're on the run. The fact that there's a test reactor in a cave is not a good sign. Pash and Lightning A need to capture the rogue scientist to ensure Hitler does not have nuclear capabilities. Lightning A pushes further into enemy territory and continues to uncover clues about the Nazi nuclear program. A nuclear research facility is found, hidden in a textile mill with laboratories in the surrounding buildings. They've finally stumbled upon what they're looking for. Lightning A captures 25 scientists. Through intense interrogation, the Nazis reveal the location of hidden research files. They've been stored in a watertight drum and sunk into a cesspool. Those Nazi bastards are not making things easy for Pash and Lightning A. Members of the squad have to dig through feces, but eventually locate the drum with all of the notes and research in it. 
The Nazis have conducted a lot of research around nuclear weapons, and Pash is nervous that Hitler might be preparing for one last push using nuclear weapons. Lightning A needs to find one of the men who started the Nazi nuclear research program, a man who has more knowledge than practically anyone else about Nazi nuclear capabilities. Pash needs to find Heisenberg. Intel has uncovered that Heisenberg is hidden in the Bavarian Alps. Pash takes Lightning A to track him down. The squad is attacked again and again by Werwolf Jungs. They engage in guerrilla warfare across the Alps, all to find one Nazi scientist. Due to all of the fighting, Lightning A has been reduced to 20 men, but they're close to their goal. Lightning A reaches the town of Erfeld, where they encounter approximately 700 SS troops. Pash uses his cunning and a little lying to convince the commanders of the Nazi soldiers that he has a lot more men than just 20 worn down soldiers. The Nazis decide to surrender instead of fight. The commanders eventually give up the location of Heisenberg, who is hiding in a mountain cabin not far away. Lightning A captures the scientist two days before Hitler commits suicide. After questioning Heisenberg, it's clear Hitler never had and was never really close to having nuclear weapons. It is a great relief that the Nazis never developed nuclear weapons. The war may have gone very differently if they had, but why didn't they? Hitler undeniably had the resources and scientists to make an atomic bomb a reality. The main reason, it seems, is because Hitler never really put the energy or effort into developing his nuclear program. He had been so successful with his troops, tanks, and aircraft that he didn't see any reason to pump money into developing an atomic bomb until it was too late. Toward the end, he began to realize a nuclear weapon could turn the tide of the war back in his favor, but it was already too late. Another issue is that the Nazi nuclear program was divided into different camps. There were several different scientists working on nuclear fission, but they seemed to be more in competition than working together. This is one of the reasons the United States developed nuclear weapons first. The US consolidated all research into one project, the Manhattan Project, so all scientists were working together collaboratively. Now the Second World War is over and there's no longer any need to worry about Hitler and his crazy idea for a Third Reich. The world is safe from the threat of nuclear devastation and everyone can sleep safely at night. There's just one little problem. The Cold War is about to begin. Now check out what might have happened if Hitler did have nuclear weapons and won World War II by watching What If Hitler Had Won? Or check out 50 insane Cold War facts that will shock you.